As 2023 comes to a close, SpaceX becomes even more urgent in preparing for the Starship No. 3 flight expected to take place in early 2024. Last week, they galvanized the space community with the fiery test of Ship 28 in a static fire test, which was immediately followed by the same test attempt on Booster 10. By doing so, SpaceX seems to want to demonstrate Starship's super-fast turnaround ability. However, fast is not always good, right? In fact, in those tests, both Ship 28 and Booster 10 faced major issues that raised concerns about the feasibility of the Flight 3 launch date. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. On Wednesday, December 20, at 1.37 p.m. local time in South Texas, the Starship upper stage prototype known as Ship 28 completed a full duration static fire with all six of its Raptor engines. It all began with an alert from SpaceX notifying of an impending space test scheduled from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., setting the stage for this groundbreaking event. The test of the Starship spacecraft was carried out within six seconds, much shorter than that of NASA's SLS with 8 minutes 20 seconds. That's because SpaceX, unlike NASA, doesn't use flame diverters, it can only conduct short, static fires. A longer duration would increase the risk of damaging the engines, for example, through rocks and dust. Ship 28 is being prepped to conduct Starship's third test flight, which SpaceX aims to launch in the coming weeks. And that timeline apparently remains on target for today's trial went well. Flight 3 Starship completed a full duration static fire with all six of its Raptor engines, SpaceX said in a post on X, which also featured video of the test. The rocket and ground support equipment looked undamaged after the test. Additionally, the subsequent testing of Ship 28's payload bay yielded positive results, signifying its continued functionality following the rigorous static fire trial. With the successful completion of this crucial test, attention turns to the next phase as Ship 28 is set to return to the high bay for further preparations. Plans include the inclusion of a dummy payload, a significant step in simulating real mission conditions, solidifying the vehicle's readiness for future endeavors. However, a few damaged tiles after Starship 28's static fire caught the public's eye. An insignificant amount of Starbrick fell out of aft flaps and three failed to stick to the area in the lower body. It sounds like SpaceX is facing a new challenge relating to Thermal Protection System or TPSS, especially within the context of this third flight. SpaceX will seek to fly further into a profile that will see Starship ultimately make a controlled landing into the ocean north of Kauai, Hawaii. It means they would conduct a full test of TPS. In Flight 2, the cameras captured images of several heat shield tiles falling off the vehicle. The reason for this accident is due to the SpaceX team missed out on testing each tile individually with a suction cup to verify their adhesion, as they usually did in previous tests. And we used to strongly believe that the problem would not be repeated in the next tests. Unfortunately, the result this time is not very positive. So does that mean TPS will be a big deal for Starship's return on its next test flight? Well, theoretically, TPS looks like an armor layer protecting the vehicle's body against direct friction with air and of course. However, losing a few tiles in mid-flight would not necessarily cause a definite failure. Regarding the structure, beneath the star bricks, the white, flexible ceramic fiber mat was installed to enhance the protection and stop any heat that makes it through the gaps between tiles. That mat is probably something like Kaiowul 3000, which can be used up to approximately 1,530 degrees Celsius without fail. In addition to the felt padding, the vehicle is made of high melting point steel. It would have been interesting to see how long it could hold up during re-entry since the steel underneath is far more resilient than an aluminum structure used on NASA's space shuttle, so even if it loses a few tiles, it'll still be fine. On the STS-27 mission, the space shuttle had an incident once where some tiles fell off at a spot where it was steel underneath and they didn't even find out about it until after it had landed safely and they started inspecting. Last but not least, SpaceX has been researching and testing this system both on the ground and in the sky with the Starship prototype very early on. Clearly, issues related to TPS are not unfamiliar to them and, as far as I know, 
they have never even mentioned it as a very serious problem. Therefore, we can completely rest assured that everything will be handled smoothly. After the successful static fire test of Ship 28, in the joy of victory, SpaceX fans continue to look forward to another good news from the remaining piece of Starship, Booster 10. Unfortunately, things didn't unfold as expected. On December 21, in the test's window spanning from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. local time as usual, instead of a static fire test, Booster 10 encountered issues before completing the LOX loading process. This began with the fact that the orbital tank farm commenced operations, marking the beginning of the process. Subsequently, the venting of OLM followed, fueling expectations about observing the liquid stage from the OLM. This observation led to an anticipation of the imminent start of LOX loading, potentially indicating preparations for a spin prime and an upcoming static fire. Nevertheless, at a critical juncture, a significant vent disrupted the anticipated flow of events, hinting at a possible delay or a situation requiring further assessment, possibly signaling a hold scenario. The test concluded unexpectedly with an unusual detanking of Booster 10. Ordinarily, the standard procedure involves the drainage of CH4 and a significant portion of LOX, with residual amounts returning to the storage tanks via gravity. Strangely, this time, all LOX appeared to drain out from the side of the launch mount, diverging from the typical recovery process, indicating an anomaly in the operation. Fast forward today, 22 or one day after the test, media recorded Booster 10's transport stand had been positioned at the booster lift area near the orbital launch mount. But at dawn on the 23A, Booster 10's transport stand rolled back to its original storage area. My guess is that SpaceX initially intended to take the B-10 back to the production site for repair, but the vehicle's errors could be fixed on site so they no longer needed a transport stand. In parallel with SpaceX conducting a deep investigation into the underlying causes of the deviation from the standard procedure, a lot of speculation appeared on social platforms. According to CSI Starbase's Zach Golden, the failure could come from a significant overhaul of the LOX side infrastructure, encompassing pumps, subcoolers, valves, and plumbing. This recent upgrade underscores SpaceX's commitment to fortifying and enhancing propellant storage and distribution systems, critical components vital to fueling the expansive aspirations of the Starship missions. Another probable cause could be attributed to the behavior of the subcoolers, potentially resulting in solid iced remnants within the LOX lines. This anomaly might have impeded the flow rate, possibly due to cavitation, hindering the test's progress. Although there is not any official information released, Booster 10 hardware is still considered innocent. Anyway, SpaceX has been pushing things as fast as possible. This was made clear in the announcement of another SpaceX test scheduled to take place on December 27, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. under Cameron County's road closures. As if to encourage everyone, Elon Musk posted a tweet on the 22 or one day after B-10 static fire test. Starship Flight 3 static fire test. The attached images of Ship 28 during a very successful test a few days ago. In rocketry, new and good things take time. Upgrades on tank farms are no exception. In addition, SpaceX is famous for being a leader in innovation and creativity, so they always know how to handle and solve problems arising from this innovation. Hopefully, we can witness the giant Starship rocket roaring in the sky early next year as planned. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.